be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. It is time for Children's Chapel. If you are going to Children's Chapel, now is the time to come forward. Our teachers over here. They will rejoin us at the peace. Bless your time. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor, together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water, in a straight path in which they shall not stumble, for I have become a father of, to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord. We will read Psalm 126 this morning in unison. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great thanks for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses of the Negev. 
Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. A reading from the letter of Hebrews. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But Jesus holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. And like the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and for those of the people. Thus he did once for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness, but the word of the oath which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large cloud, crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, 
Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Take our minds and think through them. Take these words and speak through them and set our hearts on fire for love of thee. Amen. We often take our sight for granted until some problems occur with our vision. Today, thanks to modern medicine, we can correct our vision whether we're far-sighted or near-sighted. Many of us wear glasses or contact lenses. And as we age, our vision changes. Some people have cataract surgery. Other procedures can reverse the problems that come with age. Is a total eye transplant possible? According to the Academy, American Academy of Ophthalmology, a total eye transplant is not possible. However, there can be transplants of the cornea that can restore someone's sight. So this academy says that our eye is a complex organ connected to the brain by the optic nerve. The optic nerve sends visual signals from the eye to the brain which interprets them as images. The optic nerve is small. It's only between 1.3 and 2.2 inches long and a fraction of an inch wide. Think of that, a fraction of an inch wide. Yet, the optic nerve has more than one million tiny nerve fibers, much like a fiber optic cable. Once these nerve fibers have been cut, they cannot be reattached. The transplanted eye can't send signals to the brain through the optic nerve. That is why it's currently not possible to restore vision with the whole eye transplant. Well, this blind beggar, Bartimaeus, does not receive an eye transplant, and yet it's the second story in Mark's gospel of someone receiving their sight. We learn that Jesus is traveling through Jericho on his way to Jerusalem for the Passover. And this blind man is sitting beside the road and he hears that Jesus is passing by. Notice that he is a blind beggar. We don't know if he's been blind from birth or that he lost his sight due to some injury or disease. He must have heard about Jesus as a worker of miracles, for he calls out to Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Even though many try to silence him, he cries out even more, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. A vivid scene unfolds. Notice the detail that Mark includes in this story. The man throws off his clothes, that probably means his outer garments. He springs up and comes to Jesus. Did he have anybody help him get up and go to Jesus or does he merely follow him in some way hearing his voice? Also, Jesus doesn't assume what this man wants. But it must have been obvious. Nevertheless, nevertheless, he asks, what is it that you want me to do for you? He calls Jesus by a very interesting title. In our translation today, it's my teacher. Let me see again. But this same word is the form of address that Mary uses when she recognizes Jesus in the garden after the resurrection. Remember that story? Go back to Easter Sunday. We always read 
John chapter 20 about Jesus' resurrection on Easter Sunday. Mary thinks that Jesus is the gardener. She says, why have you taken away my Lord? And then she turns and recognizes Jesus when she hears his voice. He calls her Mary. And then she says, Rabuni. Now this is significant in two ways. First of all, it's Aramaic, the language that Jesus used, and it means my teacher. It's an endearing term, a little bit stronger than simply rabbi. And this is the same word that the blind man uses, Rabuni. Too bad it's not reflected in our translation of the Gospel of Mark. Then what happens is truly amazing. This man receives his sight. Jesus simply says, go, your faith has made you well. Not only does he receive his sight, but he follows Jesus on the way, presumably not just through Jericho, but all the way to Jerusalem. We also learn from the Gospel of John that when Jesus restores the sight of the man born blind, he says, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. John is making the point that Jesus not only restores sight to the blind, which is miraculous enough, but that he is bringing illumination, that is the truth about God, to everyone who believes. Now we also note that this miracle occurs as Jesus is leaving Jericho to begin his ascent to Jerusalem. This is one of the last recorded miracles in the Gospels. And Bartimaeus addresses Jesus as the son of David. Now we may not think that's quite unusual, but it's actually a messianic title. Jesus doesn't silence the man at all, but allows him to call out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. So this secret of Jesus as a Messiah, which has been kept throughout the gospel, a mark is now well known. Jesus is entering Jerusalem as the Messiah, the son of David. What does it take for us today to recognize who Jesus really is? Today, many people hear about Jesus and they think that, well, he's a good, wise teacher about morality and the way of life. But they may never come to the realization that Jesus is the Messiah, the Lord, and the light of the world. It takes a special vision and faith to believe who Jesus is and who the Gospels and the Apostles claim him to be. Perhaps John Newton had this story in mind when he wrote that hymn, and we're all familiar with the hymn, Amazing Grace. That first verse, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. Is seeing really believing? With the advent of artificial intelligence and so many false images, or images of virtual reality, we're not always sure that what we are seeing is real or representation of the truth. But with our eyes of faith and understanding, we know who Jesus is. And Jesus says to Thomas after his appearing in the resurrection, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Amen. I invite you to stand as we profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth.
of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, but one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have a compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. And let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Whom shall we pray for? and privileges, guide the people of the United States in the election of officials and representatives, that by faithful administration and wise laws, the rights of all may be protected and our nation may be enabled to fulfill your purposes. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. We may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you 
in eternal life. Please stand as you're able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Good Shepherd Episcopal Church. Thank you for choosing to worship with us this morning. If you are visiting for the first time, we invite you to fill out a visitor card, which is found in the pew back in front of you. There is a place for information. We would like to formally welcome you for, for visiting with us. We also have a gift bag to give you afterwards. I would uh, greatly enjoy meeting you, giving you that gift bag, but also want to let you know that everyone is invited to come over to coffee hour with us after the service, through the double doors, through the breezeway, through the other doors, and to the right in Sterling Hall. That's where we will have a time of fellowship and sharing with coffee and treats and all manner of things. So please join us for coffee hour. If you have a prayer request, there is also a place in this visitor card for a prayer request. Please fill that out and drop it in the offering plate as it comes by. On the back of your bulletin, you'll find a list of upcoming events for the week ahead. Please take a look at that. I do want to draw your attention to a couple of things. One, because it's not on here, but just as a reminder, for the Daughters of the King, today after the, uh, this 1030 service, they will be working on a service project in Shepherd's Hall. It's in Shepherd's Hall, right? So if you are in DOK, you probably already know about it, but just a reminder, y'all are meeting in Shepherd's Hall after this to work on a service project. So that's for DOK. Next Sunday is going to be a rather big Sunday with a lot going on. Next Sunday is All Saints Sunday. Several things happening. Uh, we're going to have a baptism. Two people are going to be baptized on that Sunday. We will have a renewal of baptismal vows. It is also a day when we will remember those who have died within the past year. If you haven't already submitted names to the church, please do that in the next couple of days so that we can get those in the bulletin and make that a part of our service so that we can add a prayer for them and we'll light a candle for them too as a part of the service. It is also the day that our deacon, Joe Mills, will begin his service at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church. So there is a lot going on, and the DOK is looking at a rededication too. We're still going to try to get it to within an hour-ish, so we'll see what we can do. Um, but it'll be a fun day for the church. It's one combined service at 1030, so we can do all of this together. So uh, please do make sure to come on Sunday morning for All Saints Sunday. And we are in stewardship season, and so I would like to invite our stewardship chair, Tom Fitzgibbons, to come forward and share something with you. Do you want the lectern? Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yeah, it's been my pleasure this year to be entrusted to lead the stewardship campaign that, uh, for the year. Um, I hope uh, folks have seen uh, the letters and things going out, and I hope that you all prayerfully consider how you can use your time, talent, and treasures to support the ongoing efforts here at Good Shepherd. I want to talk a little bit about my time here. Uh, my wife and I joined Good Shepherd about five years ago. 
Uh, we had a really young family with two sons at the time. Isla hadn't been here yet, hadn't gotten here yet. Um, we'd been unchurched for about 15 years since we were in teenagers growing up in our separate houses. When we were looking for community and a place to call home, um, we're both from upstate New York, so we don't have a family here. Both of us being really far from our family, we were looking for something that offered an opportunity to connect to our past, our tradition, and, and also look forward with openness. We felt at home quickly here when greeted not only by the people, but also the space and the service. From the mural in the narthex stating that all are welcome, to the organ music and liturgical service, we felt comforted and at ease. As we've continued to walk in love through the growth of our family and becoming more involved here at Good Shepherd, we see the power and impact that this place has on the community through its ministries. If you've read any of my notes or reflections throughout this stewardship season, you'll notice that I often refer to the church as a ho and, the, and our buildings as a home base. I believe that through our stewardship, we can fortify our foundation and keep it strong so that we, the people who make up the congregation, can live out and spread the mission of our ministries through fellowship and outreach. Thanks. I do hope you've all received pledge cards. If not, the church will be happy to make sure that you do receive a pledge card. If you are here, I hope you will complete a pledge card. In Gathering Sunday is scheduled for November 17th. I know my wife and I sat down and had a conversation about this and completed ours, and I encourage you to do the same. I join you in that effort. So please do support financially the mission and ministry of Good Shepherd. We cannot do it without that support. It is all you and your support that makes everything we do possible. I do want to say thank you to Father Mark for our guest preaching today. Thank you for accepting that invitation. I always appreciate that. Is there anyone who's celebrating a birthday or anniversary this week that we might pray for? Please come forward. Come on down. Or is it up? Liturgically, it's up, actually. So you're celebrating an anniversary? You're celebrating birthdays? And a birthday. Okay. Let's, uh, let's say, do you want to come over here with the birthdays? Joy, are you, are you, are you coming up for birthdays? I mean, we don't want to mix you guys up or anything, you know. I'll offer the wrong blessing or something. No. Okay. Let's pray for birthdays first. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace. Strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let's pray for the anniversary. Your anniversary. Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and His church. Send, therefore, your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Happy anniversary. How many years has it been? 24 years. Congratulations. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Did you come just for your birthday? <laughs> no, I mean, you're visiting family. Yeah, happy birthday. Good. I'm glad, I'm glad that you're able to visit for your birthday. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Okay, I'll remind people. Thank you. Bless you all. So I just received a reminder. Um, hopefully it's all on your radar, too. There's a time change next week. But this is the, this is the good one, right? Where we get an extra hour of sleep. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, make sure to set your clocks accordingly for this great service we're going to have next week, All Saints Sunday. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord.
be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our prayers.
gifts of God for the people of God.
invite you to stand or kneel as we pray. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Just one second. Sorry. Are you going out? I forgot to do this. Our lay Eucharistic visitor is going out. In the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we all share one bread, one cup. Thank you.